Okay everybody, welcome to this video. In this video, we're now going to go through and create our AWS AppStream stack. So here we are in our AWS console. I'm going to click the button, create stack. I'm going to give it a name of APS underscore stack underscore demo zero one. The display name is what users will see that it usually needs to be something fairly obvious. It depending, really depends on the apps and stuff that you're publishing as a resource. You could have office apps. It could be finance apps. In this example, I'm just simply going to put demo, whoops, demo app one. Um, there are other options when the users, uh, at the end of their streaming session, when they're logged out, they could redirect to another website. It could be something like that, exist or exit. Um, and then the same for a feedback URL. Helps if I put HTTP in front of that. Um, and the same for a feedback URL, they could be sent to a survey monkey or something like that for the end of the, uh, the, the session. You'll note this is the first, on the first page, this is where we select the option for what fleet we're going to connect to. In this instance, there is only one fleet, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, one stack will only connect to one fleet. You cannot connect to multiple fleets. Happy with those options at this point. We're going to go ahead and click next. Here is where we enable storage for the session. You can enable home folders, which means for each user, a folder will be created in S3 as part of our within our apps AWS account. You'll note that it says here the app stream fleet associated with this stack with this stack must allow access to S3 either via the internet or an Amazon VPC endpoint for S3. Now that's you could set up an endpoint in your VPC so instances that are within that VPC can directly connect to S3 without having to go over the internet or the AppStream instances and the fleets can just go out over the internet to S3, but they need to be able to access it um, either via the internet or via an endpoint. So you, you must make sure that if you do use your home folders in S3, that these instances do have that access to be able to connect. Um, in this instance, I'm not going to enable home folders. You'll note here that you can link users to their Google Drive account as well. So they can save files to their Google Drive during the streaming process. They can even download and, and edit and manipulate files as well, which is very cool. At this point, we're going to leave both these options disabled and we're going to click Next. So this is some of the policies around the users and their experience within the AppStream session, whether they can cut and paste or whether they can only paste or whether they can copy locally or whether it's completely disabled. File transfer, whether it's upload or download or both or disabled. And again, with printing to the device, whether it's enabled or disabled. At this point, let's leave all of these options as on, upload and download and printing to the device is enabled. And that way that gives the users the most flexibility. Obviously for you and depending on your applications and the environment that you're running this in, you may need to be able to or you may need to prove that you can control these settings so users can't download information like financial information or statistics or spreadsheets, whatever it might be. So obviously you need to select this that's right for your use case. Um, we're finished with the settings here, so I'm going to click review now. This is the name and the details of the stack. We have disabled the home folder integration. We've left the settings as default for the policies here. Let's just go ahead and click create. So the stack's now created. We can use our existing users and our user pool to connect directly to this. You can also then federate this stack with uh, with um, ADFS or external third-party authentication. I will show you how to do that in a later video. At the moment, I think what we should do is just very quickly test with the user that already exists in our account here, um, in our AWS user pool. Uh, there's, a pre there's a video in this series of how we've gone ahead and created this user. So do please follow the, the user creation video if you haven't followed that already. Um, but in this instance, I've already got one created and I'm simply going to assign a stack now to this user. There is now a stack that exists, which is great. We're going to select that. It's going to send an email notification to my email account. But because I already have the link to the to be able to log into AWS AppStream saved, I don't need the anything else. I'm going to click assign that stack. And if I go to my access AWS AppStream, I can log in as my user account.
and there we go you can see I've got the link so I now no longer get a message that there isn't any stack assigned or no resources available and there's the two applications that have been exposed within the image that are available to me if I now click on something like WinZip you will see that because it's an on-demand session it will prepare slowly the session and it can take up to two minutes I normally see it takes around a minute that's on average um, I'm going to allow the cut and paste um, options so that's Chrome prompting that the the AppStream session is going to automatically allow cut and paste which is a great new recently recently added feature to AppStream which is awesome I'm just going to pause the video while we wait for this instance to start and then we should see WinZip running and ready to go and there we go you can see the uh, the WinZip session running I'm going to use evaluation version and there's WinZip running so guys, that's it for this demo. Thank you very much for joining. Let me know if you need anything more, want to know anything more about this process. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.